Azure Blob Storage is Microsoft's solution to store massive amounts of data in the cloud. The data can be structured or unstructured, and that's why you can then build a data lake on top of Azure Blob Storage. But data is of no value if you cannot use a framework to analyze it. For example, in this video, I'll show you how you can use Databricks and Apache Spark to read data store in Azure Blob Storage. But before we do that, first let's see how Microsoft Azure Blob Storage organizes data. To be able to store data in Azure, we need an Azure subscription. And then we will see how we can use Azure Blob Storage. So Blob Storage is organized into three types of resources. The first one are the storage accounts. A storage account provides a unique namespace in the entire Azure cloud for your data. And every object that you store in Azure storage has an address that includes your unique storage account name. In this case, the unique name of each resources in the file storage account will also have the name file storage account in the address. Now, the data inside the account are stored into containers. So files are organized into containers and a container is similar to a directory in a file system. A storage account can have an unlimited number of containers. So in our case, we have a file storage account and there's only one container and this is the file container, for example. The third type of resources in blob storage are the blobs and blobs stand for binary large objects for example blobs can be files of any type from text to video to executable so in short blob is anything that we can store on a computer so all these resources of course are securely stored in azure so we cannot just go around and read data of people or any data stored in microsoft azure because everything is secure so now we need our application to be able to access the resources in azure blob storage and to do that we have multiple possibilities to get access to data in azure blob storage we can use shared keys azure active directories or even anonymous public access which means everyone with the address of the object can go and read the data without authentication. Or we can use shared access signature, which is what we are going to see in this video, how to use shared access signature to access data in Azure. So a shared access signature is a unique resource identifier that will grant restricted rights to Azure storage resources, which means it is a token that lets you access the data in a circular manner and it has a limited time period and also the type of resources that you can access that you can access using a shared access signature can be configured and this is how we will see in the next step how we can create a shared access signature for objects that are stored in microsoft azure for that, let me switch into the Azure portal and show you how we can create a shared access signature. To create a shared access signature for a storage account, we have to log it into the Azure portal and then select storage accounts. Then you will see all the storage accounts that are available to you. In my case, I will select this account. And now what we, are, we like to do is to create a shared access signature that can be used to access the resources stored in this account. For that purpose, we scroll down on the settings, select shared access signature. And here again, we can see what a shared access signature really is. So it is a unique resource identifier that grants restricted access rights to Azure storage resources. And then we can then provide this signature to applications and they can use that to read data. So in our case, we like to create a shared access signature and then provide it to Apache Spark inside the Databricks environment to read data that are stored in this storage account. So this is a blob storage service. So we don't want, we want the shared SX signature to only have access to the blob storage, but not to queue or tables. And also it should only be allowed to reach 
read data inside container and also the object in those container. And now we can decide what the key can do. Should we be able to delete or do stuff? What I'll do, I'll just let everything enable here. One thing we can also do is to then set expiry date, which means after the expiry date is over, the shared access signature will not be valid anymore. So any attempt to access data with an expired key will result into, a, into an error. Once we selected everything, we then go down here and generate the shared access signature and other connection string. In our case, what we need now is this token. So I copy the token. Make sure to copy this data anywhere because Microsoft Azure does not store this data anywhere. So if you lose them, you will have to regenerate them again and each time you will get a new key. So now let's switch back into the Databricks environment to see how we can use this key to read data that are stored in this account. Now I'm inside the Databricks programming environment. I'm using the community edition. And as you can see here, I already created a cluster that is running Apache Spark 3. Databricks has its own file system. So, and to read data from a different location, we must attach the external location to the Databricks file system. And we do that using the dbutil, the file system commands, and then we have to mount the external file system to the Databricks file system. And in this case, this is how we can mount an Azure storage blob container to the Databricks file system. So we have to provide the container name, the storage account, and also some configurations. So let's see how to do that. The first thing I will do now, I go here, the container name is TCP DS data. The storage account name in my case is inside. I had data. Here, let's remove the directory. We would like to mount the complete container and not a specific directory. Now, let's give the mount data a name. What I like to do, I like to preface any mount point with the name of the external service. In our case, it is Azure, so I like to put a Z in front of it. And when I'm reading data from Amazon S3, I put an S3 in front of it. In that way, I'll, already, I'll always see in the name of the folder or in the mount point where the data are coming from. So I do a Z and then the name of the container, TCPDS data, for example. Now, you can see here that now we need some configuration so for the Databricks file system to know where and if it has access to the data or not. I think there's a error here. Yeah, this should do it. So extra config, one thing we have to do, I'll first put the SAS key down here. And we also need some extra configuration. And as you can see, these are the parameters we need because we are using a shared access signature. We have to provide the container name, TCP. DS data and the storage account name. Let me just copy that one from here again and put it there. Now, now let's add the configuration here. I'll do the following. I just add this is map, then we'll do config and we are not using Databricks secrets. We will see how to use Databricks secrets in another video. So let me remove that one and just add the sales key directly in there. So you can see how to configure the FS amount command using the description below. This will bring you to the Microsoft Azure page and then you can get more information about how this works. So. Now let's move on. Let me execute this one so that our parameter are going to be created. Now everything is created. Now you can go ahead and mount the file system itself now. 
but before I execute the command, I have to fix the name TPC DS data. Let me call it like that. Uh, let me just call it TPC data. Now let's go ahead and execute that. Now, the result was true, which means our Azure container was successfully mounted. Let's verify that. Now we can do the following. We can use the magic file system command inside the Databricks programming environment. And this will allow us to use ls. Now we can take this name. Put it there, execute that. And this will show us exactly the same folder that we have available in our storage account. So we can even go deeper to something like 25 GB. And it will show us all the files available in this folder. As you can see, there are the files and everything else. And if you then switch back into the Azure portal, you will see that these are exactly the same files that are available to us inside Microsoft Azure portal. So let's do that. So this is the account itself. We go to overview. Then the containers. Then the folder name. And you can see these are all the files available inside the TPCDS. So container, and now we are able to list those files inside the Databricks environment because we mount it. So you can see this is the location of the file. And now let's see how we can then use Apache Spark to read the data. So back inside the Databricks programming environment, we do something like fs head. We would like to take a look into the customer file. Let me copy the path like this. And this will allow us to see the first byte of this file. Boom, 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 boom. Head. Now you can see that our file is separated by a vertical bar. So now let's see how we can then read the files. So we do something like spark dot read dot options, for example, and then we say the separator. We know that this is a vertical bar. I also know that the file is structured like a CSV file, so I can do something like CSV and then specify the path. And here I want to read another file, a different file. This is the customer file. Let's give it a name. This is the customer data frame. Equal that and execute the cell. Apache Spark will then go ahead and create a data frame based on the data that are stored in Microsoft Azure. Now you can see we have a nice data frame here. And because I already know what is the name of the different columns, we can go ahead and change the data frame itself. So we can do the following. We can do customer DF, then we rename some columns. So with column renamed, for example, and then we say rename the eighth the eighth, the eighth column to first name, and then the also rename the ninth, the ninth column to last name, 
let us also filter the data frame we also like to filter where the last name is like so the, the last name should start with the letter a so we can do something like this and then we like to select only the first name the last name and the id of the customer so we do something like this select expression now we know that the first the first column in our file is the customer id so i can just rename it like that and then i select the first name and the last name so this is how we can filter a data frame how we can rename the columns of a data frame how we can even assign alias to a column and if you like to know more about how to use apache spark to perform that kind of data analysis check in the description below and you will find a course that will help you go from zero to hero when it comes to databricks and apache spark so now that we have that what we can do we will then execute this cell in apache spark we go ahead and create another data frame for us as you can see this was quite fast it took around one second to do that and this is how our data frame now look looks like but apache spark evaluate data lazily which means to do this apache spark doesn't even have to read data from azure if you really like to get some extract of our data from microsoft azure then we have to run what we call an action and for that we will then pick the res 6 data frame this one for example uh, let me do the following i'll just use the display function available inside the databricks programming environment and now we can do show us the data frame what this does if we go ahead and pick thousand rows from this file that we are reading here and display us the first name the last name and the customer id so let me execute that now it will start a spark job you have a couple job running and there you go as you can see this is how you can read data from microsoft azure using databricks what is really important here is to know that the account that i'm using is located in europe but the cluster itself is running somewhere in the usa and this is how and as you can see it took only five five to six seconds to go there read data from our azure azure storage come process the data inside a data brick cluster and send the result back to us so this was it for this video if you like to learn more about apache spark check the description below